Do you have one of these? Are you making full use of it? Did you know that these devices can not just share files but can also do many other things? They're like mini servers in little packages. In this video I'm going to show you how to make better use of your Synology NAS. So keep watching to find out how. So here we are logged into my Synology NAS and as you can see I'm on the desktop at the moment. On my desktop I have a hyper backup control panel and package center shortcuts on there. So what you need to do first to be able to install Home Assistant which is what we are doing in this episode is click on the main menu icon which is the four squares at the top left side. Then from the list of icons that appears you need to select package center. Then from the list of packages that appears on screen in the search box you need to type in virtual machine. This should then bring up a list of packages one being called virtual machine manager. So for Virtual Machine Manager you need to click on Install and you may be prompted with the following window that appears saying Package Center will automatically perform the following operations when Virtual Machine Manager is installed. Do you want to continue? And it's asking to install Replication Service. If you already have Replication Service installed you will not be prompted for this window but as I don't, I'm going to click on yes. Now that the uh, replication service was quickly installed, it's now at prompting me to install Virtual Machine Manager and it's asking me which volume I would like to have it installed on. You may or may not be prompted with this same window depending on if you've already previously ticked the box saying always install new packages on volume in the future. As I have never picked this option, hence why I'm being prompted to ask which volume I want to install Virtual Machine Manager on. So I'm going to be install it on my volume one and I will click next. Then it's asking me to confirm settings. I will just click done and wait for Virtual Machine Manager to be installed. Now you will see my screen has changed and under installed here I now have Virtual Machine Manager. So I'm going to click X on this window in the top right corner to close it and then from the desktop or the Synology NAS I'm going to click the four square icon in the top left corner and then where it shows virtual machine manager I'm going to right click it and click add to desktop. This will then put a shortcut as you can see back on my Synology NAS desktop. I'm then going to click on virtual machine manager and from the wizard that appears saying welcome to virtual machine manager setup wizard. I'm going to click start and then from the check host settings I'm going to click next. Then from the virtual machine manager it's going to ask me where I want to install the virtual machines. As I use volume one to store this station manager and also all of my applications I'm going to use volume one to store all the virtual machines on as volume two contains all of my shared data files. So I will click next. Now it's saying that the virtualization cluster has been created successfully. You can now start creating your first virtual machine and then I will click finish. You will then be shown the virtual machine manager dashboard. Here you can see that I've got one host, zero virtual machines and one storage location. So before we install Home Assistant let's go through 
uh, the options in the left hand side menu. So under overview, which is the page we're in at the moment, it provides you with the dashboard for the virtual machine manager. Under virtual machines, here you'll be presented with a list of the virtual machines that you have on your system. At the moment, this is obviously blank because we haven't actually created any virtual machines. Under cluster, it is showing you the details of your Synology NAS where you're running your virtual machine manager on. And it provides status saying how much memory you have available, system reserve memory, how much CPU usage, memory usage and so on is being used. Then under storage, it provides you with a list of the storage locations where your virtual machines are being stored. Then for network, it provides you with a list of network connections which are hosted on your Synology NAS. Here you can see that I've got five LAN connections and at the moment I'm using two of them. So moving down to image, here you'll see the list of ISO or disk image or disk station manager image files which you have within your virtual machine manager. Under protection we have various settings to protect the virtual machines and configure for example snapshot replication. We can create plans and schedules to create automatic snapshots and replications of virtual machines. Under settings, under general, we have boot settings and you'll see that there's various options set by default. We'll leave those as they are. We'll then click on cluster notification and here there's no options configured in there at the moment and also high availability there's a default option set. We'll leave those as they are. Then under log, this provides you with a log file of uh, actions which have been performed in Virtual Machine Manager. Then under license, at the moment we have a basic license. And here, if you wish, you can add more licenses so that you can have packs of three node or seven node virtual machines. We leave that as it is at the moment on the basic license. So let's go back to overview. And then what we need to do to download Home Assistant so that we can install it onto the Virtual Machine Manager on our Synology NAS, we need to go to www.home-assistant.io and press enter. Then under the Getting Started tab, we will select this. And then for installation, we will select this. And then scroll down to the section for alternative and select this. Then you'll be presented with the web page saying alternative and install Home Assistant operating system and download the appropriate image. We need to download the VMware ESXi image, which is a .ova file. So here we will click on this OVA file for VMware ESXi. Then we will save it somewhere on our Synology NAS or on uh, your local machine, whichever you choose to download it to. So just click on save and wait for the image to download. Once it is downloaded, you can then click close on that web page for Home Assistant and then go back to your Synology NAS. So within Virtual Machine Manager, you need to select Virtual Machine from the left hand side and then click on create. And then from the drop down menu option that appears, click import. Then from the window that appears, you need to select import from OVA files. This should be selected by default automatically. So click next. Then 
from the select import method you can either choose upload a file from PC or select a file from Synology NAS depending on where you have just saved the OVA file that you have downloaded from the Home Assistant web page. I've downloaded it to my Synology NAS so I will select a file from Synology NAS and click browse. Then I will select the location where I have saved the OVA file and I will select the HAOS underscore OVA file and click select. Then from the select import method window again, click next. And then on the import a virtual machine select storage window, you need to select where you want the home assistant to be installed on your Synology NAS, i.e. which hard drive in your Synology NAS you wish to install Home Assistant to. I'm installing it to my Synology NAS 01 and the storage that I'm saving it to is my 500 gigabyte drive. This is the same drive that my disk station manager and all my Synology NAS applications are already installed. So I will click next. Now from the configure general specification screen, you'll see the name should be entered by default as home space assistant and all of the other options you can leave by default. So don't change them, just leave them as default and click next. Then on the storage window that appears, you will see it's showing virtual disk one and it should say 32 gigabytes or yours may be different depending on which knowledge in NAS version and how much storage you have in your system. So I would recommend leaving this as default. So click next. Then for the configure network and network, leave this set as default VM network, which is selected in there by default. Then, before you click next, select the gear icon and then for the advanced options that appears, leave the MAC address as it is, but for the model, make sure that it is set to model E1000. As you can see, this is set by default in my machine at the moment. So if yours is different, change it to E1000 and then click OK. Then once you have been taken back to the configure network and the network name is default VM network, click next. Then on the window that appears saying other settings, you need to leave ISO file for boot up as unmounted, additional ISO file as unmounted then you need auto start to be yes, so change that from no to yes. Under firmware, you need to change that to UEFI from legacy, so make sure the firmware is set to UEFI. Then under the keyboard layout, leave that to default ENUS. Then under the virtual USB controller, Select USB 3, so change that virtual USB controller to USB 3 and then under USB device leave that selected as unmounted and click next. Then from the assign power management permissions you need to select the users that you want to allow to manage virtual machines. So as I'm using only the second username down, I will tick allow next to that. I'm not using the admin or the guest account. So the admin or guest account I'm leaving as unticked, but if you use either or both of those, then tick the relevant account that you wish to allow the management of virtual machines for. Then click on next and then 
you should be presented with a summary of details for the creation of this virtual machine. Then on the option at the bottom of the window, you need to tick power on the virtual machine after creation. So make sure that is ticked and then click done. Then it will import the virtual machine, which should take a while, but after it does, the virtual machine should then power on. You can see now that it's importing virtual machine under status. And here it's now 100% and now the status is powered off. So it's now preparing the virtual machine under status. And it briefly said power on and now the virtual machine or home assistant is showing as status running. Now wait for a few moments until under the IP column, you are presented with some IP addresses. Now these are the IP addresses which you can use to manage your home assistant with. So make a note of the IP address and here I'm making a note of the first one which is 192.168.1.2.1 so I've noted 192.168.1.225. This is the IP address that you will type in the address bar to connect to your home assistant to be able to set it up and manage it. So in the next video, we'll go through setting up home assistant. And also depending on how long the video is, I will also be showing you how to add Philips Hue into Home Assistant so that you can manage your Philips Hue, Hub and associated devices via Home Assistant, rather than having to just use the Philips Hue app on a smartphone or tablet, for example. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also the like button. And also so that you get notified of the upcoming videos in this series, make sure you uh, the bell notification on as well. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye for now.